This week, our panelists consist of Republican political consultant Marcus Delartino and Democrat political consultant Don Penich Thacker. Thank you both for being here. Big story this week is a lot of reporting suggests that uh, Carrie Lake, who lost the governor's race last year in 2022, um, and during that campaign, she really went after moderate, a lot of moderate Republicans, McCain supporters, uh, people who didn't really support the MAGA agenda. Uh, but now it sounds like she is reaching out to, 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 to that part of the Republican Party to try to mend some fences there. We do know that she met with Karen Taylor Robeson a couple of weeks ago. Um, Karen Taylor Robeson was uh, Lake's primary opponent um, who Lake, Lake did defeat in that primary. I want to get your take from that. Is this a serious effort to pivot? Um, and do you think buy, uh, voters are going to buy this? I, I don't know if I would call it a pivot. I, I think it's traditional, you know, one, if you win, you should reach out to your counterpart who you beat and say, hey, can we make amends? Um, and if you lost, I think, you know, you certainly sit back and say, how can we do things better? And I think that's happening. The danger here, of course, is that the way the Republican Party is sort of structured at this point is that if you gain a little bit on this side, meaning you gain these moderate Republicans or whatever you want to call them, which, by the way, they're Ronald Reagan Republicans are not moderates, but whatever. If you gain these, you're certainly possibility you can lose here on the right. Um, and so it's a math calculation. Um, and so you're just going to have to see how that shakes out. I, the math is going to be super tight, let me tell you that. And, and, and Don, is this a legit effort then to try to moderate herself? I mean, she's still not acknowledging that she lost the 2022 election. The election issue and, 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 and baseless claims of fraud and stuff like still an issue with Republican politics. You just saw uh, Sheriff Mark Lamb, who's running for Senate, wouldn't answer that question about who was the legitimate winner of the governor's race here. So with that, all that said, I mean, do you think this is a legitimate effort on Carrie Lake's part to, do, to mend some fences? No, it's absolutely not. And it, she's not going to be able to keep it up. It is an untenable position to be in. So just this past week, her lawyers filed yet another claim that the election was rigged and that she's the governor. So how can, you know, that's classic talking out of both sides of the mouth. Mm -hmm. um, you cannot in the Republican Party today um, show fealty to the party leader, so Trump, and make that base happy, whose rhetoric is increasingly authoritarian and extreme. Um, just the past week, Trump referred to his opponents as vermin. I mean, this is literal Nazi rhetoric. You cannot stay in the good graces of that wing of the party and at the same time talk to Arizona's largest party, independents, who are independents for a reason, and say, I'm reasonable, I'm moderate, you can trust me. It is not a tenable position. And once we see the presidential kick off, presidential campaigns kick off in earnest, I think it will be obvious that it's impossible for her yeah, to but, do that. But if she goes, if Lake goes on to win the primary, and all the polling suggests she's got a very strong lead in the primary right now, is that the kind of thing that she needs to do? And 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 and, and could this work in a general election where she could get some more support that she didn't see last year? Well, first of all, you make it look like there's even a question of whether she's going to win. She's going to win that primary right now unless somebody else gets in because nobody else is competing. Well, um, we just had somebody who, who is running for against uh, her. Yeah, I apologize, <laughs> but, you know, we got to raise some money and get that campaign in gear if there's going to be a true campaign. Anyway, and I would say that to Sheriff, and I, and I like the Sheriff. Um, but that being said... Uh, you know, yes, it's something that you do. What she's trying to do tactically and strategically is peel off those Republicans who are going to cinema right now and try and put a hole in her ship before she can get moving. So tactically, that's what she's doing. What the danger that comes with that, of course, as I just stated, is that those Republicans who are further to the right are then just going to stay home in that general election and not bother voting. So you've actually gain very little. So it's going to, again, it's a very, it's going to be, a, it's a fine line to walk. And uh, I want to end here. We got about a minute left, you know, in this segment. I want to end with, uh, you know, we just watched uh, Senate President Warren Peterson talk about the Republican plan to fund teacher pay raises by going, basically extending Proposition 123 with some tweaks on that. You know, I know education is right in your wheelhouse. Your thoughts on this and this plan to do this, because everybody wants teacher pay raises, right? Sure, but the party that has consistently underfunded and attacked educators is not, in my view, going to be the party that solves or makes a sincere effort as, at improving teacher pay. Um, I would say don't believe the hype. The devil is in the details. Um, after all of the attacks that 
Senator Peterson have made against teachers and public schools, I do not believe, we'll wait and see what this bill actually looks like, but it, I do not believe that this is going to do anything other than be a empty talking point for Republicans. And, and, and that's a good point. I mean, there's still a lot of details to be hammered out. And the you know, Republicans, when they rolled out this plan in their press release, even said a lot of details to be uh, hammered out.